What is good, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of Rain Day Gaming. My name is Rain Day, and it's been a minute since I've done one of these guides, but I wanted to let everyone know that there is hope if you're struggling finding loadouts or finding the best builds for certain champions and paladins. Now, you know, that's kind of what I do on the channel. I like to run these uh, these builds that show you a lot of damage or show you a lot of dash resets, but I want to make sure that you, uh, you all know how to make builds yourselves. It's not just about me or another content creator giving you advice every single game I want you to go out there and create things I want you to come to my channel and tell me what's the the cool stuff that you found out so we're gonna go over the principles of making a build in Paladins what you need to know to be successful to make your own builds and some of the five tenants the five kind of value points you need to look at as to what's a good build or not that way when you make your builds you will be able to judge this is good this could be played this is kind of what people will go for uh, and, and not just be taking a shot in the dark so the main tenant, if y'all haven't realized already, is do not have one build for every champion. This is not a drill, ladies and gentlemen. You should not have one build for Mega Potion and Catalyst Pip. They should be different. And a lot of people make that mistake. They say, hey, here's the coolest build. Here are the coolest cards, and let's just go play Pip. But that lessens your performance and lessens your opportunities to succeed in Paladins. One of the biggest things about making good decks is making multiple decks. You'll see pros have all those deck slots used because each situation is going to require maybe a different adjustment to one of the key cards if you have a main build that's great but have a main build that also augments you with maybe 200 health so that you jump over that 2450 health range so you don't get one shot by through time and space if a geno is on the other side or have a card that allows you to get that 70% anti uh, crowd control reduction and slow reduction uh, when you're playing against some D, uh, CC heavy comps like a Maldamba, a Pip, and, and maybe an Inara who's on the front line. There are a lot of champions who end up using a similar talent a lot of the time when in competitive or high level ranked. You know, you're going to run your Leviathan Makoas. A lot of times, champions won't be like Pip, who has Catalyst or Mega Potion as viable options, or Drogos, who can run Combustible, Fusilot, or even Worm Jets and still be fine. A lot of champions do end up having that one that's a little bit better than the other, or maybe a second one that's super niche but you could still use it and get some value so make sure you always have decks that not only apply to the different talents you're using but also counter potential situations you're going to see in game like I said, the CC heavy comp or crowd control is a big thing. Make sure you have decks that apply to that so that you're never caught off guard. Now, the second tenant is understanding card value. This is a hard one, and I think a lot of people will struggle on this initially as they get used to Paladins, but it, but it becomes easier. You, you just start to understand the landscape of what everyone's working with, right? You know, okay, that healer's got that heal on this cooldown. This person's got this much health at base and can augment it much like this with their cards. You start to get the, the, the understanding understanding of what really pushes me into a threshold that makes me exceptional with this build or towards the high end of, of competing versus the low end. And I think that's what it's all about when you come to look at your decks. The, the first thing I would try to say is try to find out what cooldown is worth in your cards. For, for instance, I look at the percentage of how much I can take off of the total cooldown and how close I can get to 50%. Uh, when I look at a card and I say this card has, uh, let's say my heal has six seconds on a cooldown. I look at a card and it takes away half a second every single point. So I max that out, I get two and a half seconds off a six second cooldown, which means I'm at three and a half seconds. I'm close to the 50% range of the maximum amount of con uh, uh, basically reduction in cooldown that I can get for that ability. So I'm saying this is actually a pretty good pickup. But if I have the same exact level of reduction on an ability like 0.5 seconds each rank but my ability is 13 seconds I'm getting two and a half seconds off a 13 second cooldown that's nowhere near getting me the same value so I may not prioritize the cooldown as much there for what I may try to do with this this champion is create a loadout that allows me to further get value off of when I get an elimination and then reduce my cooldowns that way maybe rushing up my 30 40 50 percent in elimination uh, reducing my cooldown so that I could cut that cooldown in half every time I find a kill or help to find a kill those are big differences because then I'll cut that cooldown essentially by you know seven seconds instead of the two and a half that I would have done yes it's not as consistent but it ends up being a bigger payoff 
off for me in the end. Now, those are the lines that you're going to have to tread while you are building your loadout because you have to understand, can this character actually do that? Uh, is this something that I'm going to see in my games quite often? And is this something that ultimately I'm going to find more valuable than just being consistently at that 11 and a half rank and then building into Kronos uh, during my games? You know, building into Kronos is a great standard for what value you're getting. If you can look at a, a card and you can see that this card is less than Kronos, way less than Kronos would be, maybe it's not really augmenting the value that well. And Kronos is 10% off. So if you have a 13 second cooldown, it's 1.3 seconds is your standard for Kronos. Now you go back to my six second cooldown, that's 0.6. And remember the card was taking off 0.5. So that's a pretty good relationship to the value of what Kronos would do. Kronos here though, 0.5 instead of 1.3, it's nearly 150% or 200% or the value, uh, you know, removed. <laughs> it's, it's less than 200% the value. So negative 200% value as far as what Kronos actually is for that cooldown. So that is a extremely uh, different uh, level of commodity in my opinion. And I think that should shift you towards different directions in your decks. That's where you start to become a little bit more, uh, I think, capable in building. And that's why Tenet 2, understanding the value of what your cards bring uh, is, a, is an extremely potent thing to making valuable decks. The third tenet is gameplay, ladies and gentlemen, finding the great gameplay cards. These cards are the ones that the designers make when designing the character. Knowing designers will have to have cards in Paladins means that they build them um, in this synchronous relationship. So they know you're going to have to pick some of these. Let's make sure that this heal or this power, this ability is at an 80% threshold value. Like, it, you know, this this damage is, is 80%, but we know you're going to use the card. So it's then going to get to the 100% value that we feel is balanced and if somebody really wants to put five points we'll make it 105 percent uh, value so that's what you need to find out uh for a lot of players there are cards that will re that will allow you to play the character optimally that without those cards you would never be able to have for instance i look at koga again criminal record is a big card for him when you're in your dragon stance and using dragon fangs that talent is meant to be used connected with the lifesteal off of your hellkite claws because otherwise you're just losing health and there's no way to get it back unless you build lifesteal or you're actively getting healed in game so that that kind of card is meant directly to impact the way you play that talent and without it you're not going to be to put, be able to play that talent as well so that's something that in a in a bigger sense you want to look at when you're choosing talents and you're choosing things oh this weird salvo uh uh talent for drogos what is that now you go into your decks you look at it and you say oh wow hey here's a card that every time i hit a salvo reduces the cooldown of the salvo so maybe that's meant to be used with that fourth talent and those types of interactions are going to help you find a ton of value and sometimes find the stuff that's kind of broken in, in terms of really really good uh, before a lot of other people find it out that's how you'll discover things that become potentially meta or you start seeing pro players use once they get a go at it now the fourth tenet is this but a little bit more abstract which is finding the cards that synergize with one another uh, take a look at furia she had a pretty fun build that was basically uh, allowing her to pyre strike the big beam from the sky the raw beam and then use her wings of wrath dashes now every time the wings of wrath dashes uh, hit somebody it shoots three orbs every time they hit they would take if you leveled up your deck a large increase off of the cooldown left remaining from the pyre strike so that means you could essentially pyre strike stun somebody wings of wrath away and those orbs hitting would reset your pyre strike so that you could then reset your wings of wrath and then dodge away it was really really fun and those cards were there on purpose to interact with one another finding the right deck sometimes doesn't just mean finding the card that synergizes with the talent it means finding the cards that synergize with one another and when you you are able to identify those this means like hey i'm going to take the cooldown off of uh my shadow travel if i'm serious oh and every time i heal i'm going to heal by reducing the cooldown of my shadow travel every second that i'm healing so basically while i heal i reduce the cooldown of my shadow travel now i also maybe reduce the cooldown of my heal so i get that heal off more so i'm even more reducing the cooldown of my shadow travel so that i can get into it faster when i you know i need to or i'm in a pinch these are the types of interactions that you want to be aware of so that you can make decks that really synergize with one another. Synergy is, is the biggest key, I think, in making a great deck.
or loadout or build or whatever the hell you want to call it. Now, you all know me. I like to bring fun. I love my gameplays. I love talking to you guys and showing you the new stuff, but it's been a minute since I brought value, value, I think, in terms of just explaining concepts. And so, although this is a little bit more rushed than maybe I would like it, I think this is going to be valuable for people looking and trying to figure this out. Uh, so, please do share it out to your friends. Like, give me a comment. What would I, what would you want me to include? Are there any more points you'd like me to cover? Is there anything you'd like me to do like this for anything else in any of the games I play? Uh, now, looking at the final thing, I'm actually going to add two. One is looking at the value of what does uh, the life steal, what does the anti heal, and what does the healing received value in your cards uh, basically add up to? What are the options you have to A, take away a large amount of healing early on to augment cards and items you might have to buy? So, for instance, if you have 75% anti heal in your loadout, like a lot of champions do, Cassie with kinetics, Fernando with brand. A talus with antediluvian if you have those cards you may be very very encouraged to pick that up so that your economy in game when you load in doesn't have to spend credits trying to get cauterized you've already got it and now you can focus on record you could have the best of both worlds uh, some talents do this like Leon's uh, death and taxes which give her an instant cauterize three so she could focus on record and she doesn't even have to build it in her loadout although she doesn't even have a card for that but let's just say there are many ways where you want to see where the value here and sometimes at a high level that's the value um, in other regards though you may find that there are cards that allow you to heal a lot of frontline players will have these cards and some damage dealers even like Koga have cards like trigger happy which allow you to heal for 50% more when you are firing your SMGs the value of this is immense because cauterize and healing received act as one-to-one -one counters somebody with a cauterize 3 90% anti heal if you pick up level 5 of trigger happy that's 50% off of that 90% anti heal suddenly you're uh, you're ignoring 50% more than that of the anti heal they built up in their cards in their economy and you're now healing for 40% of the value which is a huge difference that's a 400 heal instead of a 100 heal if you look at the base of a thousand damage being the heal a thousand healing that would have come to you given those numbers that's a huge sink that's four times more just from that one card so finding the value of those and whether they actually do apply to you in game or not is going to be extremely valuable in you picking the right deck. As far as lifesteal, I don't usually run it in my decks, but sometimes for characters like Koga and the Dragon Fang stance, it does work. And again, if you're getting 10% or more per level, there's definitely some value there. If you're getting 5%, it has to synergize really well with a talent like Koga and Dragon Fangs, which is why I recommend Criminal Record for that loadout. Uh, but otherwise, if you're not getting the value of the item in game that does the same thing like if it's a five percent or a three percent life steal and your life rip is ten percent you're looking at how close those cards come to the value of the economy and that's how you know it's a really good bet lastly health is a great thing to add as a one pointer or sometimes as a five pointer you never know some champions jump above the threshold of getting one shot or two shot or three shot or four shot by things just with bumps in that 50 health and if you have somebody who scales on health with 100 or 150 those sometimes are extremely valuable cards that push your win rate higher just statistically without a doubt lastly make sure you have fun guys build loadouts that you enjoy that you have fun use these tenants sure tell your friends sure make smarter decks absolutely but if you start making smarter decks that aren't as fun then I say forget this video and, and do what you were doing before it's all about having a good time and hopefully these tips allow you to make better decks that are more synergistic that are that are more viable for you throughout the long run that that make you not search so much for a rain day gaming video or whoever else you're watching I still hope you search I still hope you watch but hopefully this does last you and bring you some lasting value thanks so much guys i know it's a little rush but i do appreciate it and i really just wanted to get it out this is a passion project i just felt let me let me sit sorry i just choked there but yeah let me send some love to you guys and and i i'm glad i did as always friends remember to never give up never stop gaming and i'll see you all next time